And we can hear from the permit holders now. I don't see a name. Commissioners, you have a motion. Be Commissioners, you have a Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Benjamin Pierce. This is Muriel Moffrey. We are Linda the, Avery, right? Hello. Uh, we're the Linda Avery speaking. sponsors and the permit holders here. We've, our presentation is in the form of a video. You can look that up. Commissioners, you have a motion before you to not take discretionary review and approve this project as proposed. Commissioner Antonini. Aye. Commissioner Board. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Commissioner Moore. Muriel Moffrey and Benjamin Pierce, the permit holders, purchased the property at 71 Granada Avenue with a vision to remodel it prudently and with utmost sensitivity to the neighborhood and the environment. At 660 square feet with less than 600 square feet of usable space, the house is the smallest dwelling on the block. The owners have lived in the cramped quarters under poor conditions for the duration of their four and a half year permit process. In 2006, under the supervision of senior planner Rick Crawford, the permit holders began dedicating considerable resources to a plan that was subjected to multiple stringent departmental reviews and procedures. The permit holders started their neighbor outreach early on in the process and were successful in earning the support of the entire neighborhood except Diane Rosen, the appellant in this case. The Coalition for San Francisco Neighborhoods, Land Use and Housing Committee recognizes the project as an excellent example of an alteration to a rear set dwelling and has voted to endorse the project. On March 13, 2009, the permit holders were approved for Section 311 pending a variance decision and 160 neighbor notification letters were sent out by the department. The appellant was the only neighbor to object to the project for one reason, its impact on the view from her balcony. At great expense, the permit holders made extensive alterations to the design to accommodate the appellant, including squeezing the house to expand the open space between the two properties, relocating the mezzanine windows as a privacy measure, and lowering the roof and sloping it down on the appellant's side, all while maintaining their promise not to obstruct the appellant's six non-complying north side windows. The appellant rejected the permit holder's effort, claiming the new plans obstructed too much of the view from her kitchen window. The permit holders invited the appellant to work things out at community boards. The three and a half hour mediation was to no avail. The appellant's DR request set off a debate within the planning department that confirmed the need for the commission to evaluate the project. While reforming the DR process, the department discovered that the residential design team was ill-equipped to review projects like that of 71 Granada Avenue because of inadequate residential design guidelines. The department refers to the findings in its Executive Summary Discretionary Review Reform Package, February 2010, page 4. The residential design guidelines do not speak to alterations of existing non-complying buildings in required yards. Since there is not adequate <coughs> reference to support review of such projects, the department does not feel they should use administrative review if a discretionary review is filed. Rather, the department proposes to continue referring all such projects to the commission until the residential guidelines adequately address modifications to non-complying buildings. After the modest expansion, the house will still be an estimated 35% smaller than the appellant's house. The new construction is offset further by its sustainable design, which includes the removal of a portion of the house in the mid-block, the preservation of much of the existing footprint, solar systems that include passive solar fenestration and solar panels, the addition of new trees in the mid-block area, green building practices, and rainwater cisterns. The project is also consistent with the recommendations of the Environmental Protection Agency's Low Impact Design, which addresses the blight of toxic stormwater runoff. For a total of 799 square feet, the permit holders submitted to the appellant and the city the most modest expansion they could design while still developing the property to make it suitable for a single family and worth the financial cost. San Francisco architect Ian Murray observes that a rear yard cottage condition shares its nonconformity and its special benefit of side light with the adjacent neighbors. A precedent in San Francisco for offset site planning design can be found at 55 through 63 Carl Street and 61 through 71 Parnassus. The appellant has presented no objective evidence other than her own desires to limit the permit holders, nor has she demonstrated any other opposition to the project in the area 
neighborhood groups, or environmental interests. The appellant argues that the permit holders should abandon four and a half years of work in favor of the residential design team's recommendation to build a separate two-story structure with no open space requirements. Permit holder Benjamin Pierce used a model at the DR hearing to demonstrate the effect this would have on the appellant, which was commented on by Commissioner Moore. I think it's a correct observation made by Ian, architect Ian Murphy that the side windows of the adjoining buildings really rely on light coming from the side and I would say that the DR requester should count its blessings uh, that indeed she will continue with her family to enjoy a freestanding home, literally speaking. Uh, so uh, I would support your motion and uh, ask that we approve as is. I too support the positions of the other commissioners on this, although I appreciate staff's effort. This is kind of the reverse of what we usually see. We usually see a project that is larger, neighbors want it smaller, maybe staff. This is sort of like the recommendation appears to be a larger project, but the project's larger than a smaller project. So. I always you know, like to take into consideration what staff recommends, and I know we've gone through a lot of these DRs before, and frequently I err towards the DR requester, but in this case I, I do support the project. Um, I think in many ways it's an exceptional and extraordinary project, actually. Um, it's sustainable and it's thoughtful. Yeah. And I think this is a very modest addition. I think you're, you're in an awkward position because of the orientation of the existing building on the lot. And I think it's really great that you're trying to use that, and I don't think you should be penalized for doing so. I think it's been established that there's not a consistent uh, mid-block open space in this area. We're talking about a very modest addition, 1,400 square feet overall, which is, for us, very small, what we usually see. I love the fact that this your windows actually are part of your solar heating and renewable energy plan, so it's kind of important for this project to have those. And with that, I would move that we don't take the and approve the project as proposed. Second. The appellant would have the Board of Appeals believe all seven members of the commission acted errantly and with lack of judgment when they voted unanimously to support the project. If anything, the RDT was in error for making recommendations based on documents the department itself admits do not apply to 71 Granada Avenue. After reviewing all the evidence stated here, the permit holders respectfully request the Board of Appeals to approve the project as proposed. Thank you for your consideration. <laughs> well timed. Well timed. Uh, can we, uh, let me ask a question. I just had a question about the licensed contractor issue. Of course. 